forward button. All right. Um, that's good. All right, you ready? Let me just get a document here. <laughs> keep it to about 30 minutes, but I'll keep track of time. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Sorry, one sec, almost there. <clears throat> Okay, cool. Let's 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 do it. <laughs> Great. Happy to be here. <laughs> so I'm chatting here with Kelsey Trasuski of the Chronically Well. Say hello, Kelsey. Hi guys. So you're my first guest of 2022. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm really excited to have. Kelsey on as a guest. So I met Kelsey years ago when we were both living in New York City and she was living a very successful type A lifestyle in the corporate mm -hmm. world. And now <laughs> she has shifted gears to launch the Chronically Well. So tell us a little bit more about this big change in your career. What motivated you to start the Chronically Well? What's the backstory? Yeah. Great. So, um, yeah, as Peter said, we met a few years ago in um, bright, sunny Montauk. And um, now Peter lives in L.A., the life I used to live. Um, so I used to live out in L.A. So I guess my story kind of goes back, um, you know, like a lot of people probably living in New York, um, you know, kind of like corporate grind and, you know, trying to climb the corporate ladder led to a lot of burnout and led to chronic illness for me. So about 10 years ago, so this actually started back in my mid twenties, I got really sick and so many different issues. It started with digestive issues. It led into joint issues, skin issues. And ultimately I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And that was a really, you know, challenging time of my life to go through that diagnosis. And that was about, by the time I actually got diagnosed, I was living in New York. I was in my early thirties and, you know, was so relieved when I got the diagnosis, but also it meant that I was going to be taking a lot of um, immune suppressing medications and it was going to be a major lifestyle change for me, um, just managing with that disease. And over time, um, the illness actually progressed for me and I got to a place where I went from being um, you know, a varsity athlete in college to struggling to get out of bed and walk in the morning because um, the disease had progressed and affected my joints so much. So during the pandemic and actually right up leading to the pandemic, I had essentially hit what I consider my rock bottom. And I think, you know, a lot of people that go through any type of transformation can kind of pinpoint it back to one day they just had had enough um, where you're not really sure you want to keep living the way you're living. And there either has to be another way or, you know, I don't know. And for me, I decided there's got to be another way. There's got to be a better way. I was just sick of being on medications, sick of being sick. And I just felt like I was watching, you know, my life slip away from me. And so I made a commitment that I was going to heal myself. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just decided I was going to figure it out because I had heard, I started, you know, watching documentaries, started reading books about, you know, radical remission and learned that, okay, other people have done it. So if someone else has done it before, then maybe I can too. And if not, well, at least I'm going to go down swinging. So I dedicated, um, easily made a huge commitment to prioritizing my health and figuring out what I needed to do to get healthy. And so part of that, I enrolled in a nutrition program and started studying diet, um, but also lifestyle and stress management. And I didn't really realize at the time how integrated the body is mm. and how all the systems work together and realized that I had been running on a very high level of chronic stress. I was always at like an eight or a nine and that builds up and becomes inflammation in the body. And so I just really, you know, focused on, okay, how can I manage my stress? Which parts of my life are out of alignment? I made a major diet 
transformation, um, went plant-based, quit alcohol for a year, and really just focused on getting better. In that time of getting better, um, while I was studying nutrition, I also was starting to become a health coach, um, which wasn't something I had any interest in when I started this journey. I really was just doing it for personal. When did you start um, thinking about changing careers, uh, Kelsey? Was that something that was in the back of your mind for a while or um, it was just more of a sudden kind of like this is uh, like a COVID uh, decision? It was a COVID decision. <laughs> okay, sure, uh, fair enough. Total COVID decision. It was probably, I would say towards the end of 2020. So I signed up for this nutrition program. Because you were, I mean, just for our, our, our audience, yeah. I mean, you, were, you were very successful. You were in apparel. Uh, uh, you were a buyer. You were uh, very much in the corporate lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. I was a buyer for many years. I'd worked in consulting. Um, basically, I had a 15-year career in corporate retail um, and had no intentions of ever leaving it. I loved That's it. That's not I easy to give up. It. No, not at all. I still sometimes I'm like, wow, I can't believe I did it. But, you know, I think throughout the journey and I think through COVID, I think a lot of us sort of, you know, kind of, you know, reassess where we're at in life and what we're, what we're working towards. And I realized that my job that I had was a major cause of stress for me. And I think a lot of people, it's a major cause of stress. And so it doesn't mean you should just go out and quit your job. But I think figuring out a way to sort of balance. And I think while I was in this nutrition program, I actually got better at um, sort of managing and let's say the work-life balance. I mean, there's a quote that I love that there's actually no such thing as work-life balance. It's all just life. And I think that is something that really resonated with me and making sure that while you have this career that you also are, you know, what is it fulfilling in your life? What is it leading towards? So yeah, when I started this nutrition journey um, in the fall of 19, I had no intentions of leaving the corporate world, but as I got into it and started coaching and I actually took on a few clients while I was in school and I was like, okay, this is really interesting. I'm loving it. One, because personally, I'm feeling very fulfilled coaching other sure. people, but sure. two, I'm now watching other people transform in front of me and I'm helping them get there. And that's really cool. Well, let's talk about Crohn's just briefly. I mean, very high yeah. level. I'm sure we could talk about it for hours, but just, you know, I have to, I, I have to admit, I know of the term. I honestly don't know exactly what the disease is. Can you just describe to us a little bit more about what is Crohn's disease from a, a high level? Yeah. So Crohn's disease, it's an inflammatory bowel disorder or disease. Um, and what it does, it's basically inflammation somewhere in your gut. So it could be in your stomach, it could be in your small intestine or your colon. Um, and what happens over time is that inflammation can become so severe that you're actually not able to digest food anymore. So um, mm. some people have bowel resections where part of their you know, intestines are removed. I had my appendix removed because of Crohn's. Um, that was the only surgery that I had, fortunately. Um, but Crohn's can also spread outside of your digestive tract and it can affect your joints where you can get inflammatory arthritis. It can affect your skin where you develop these um, rashes and it can also affect your eyes and you can ultimately go blind. And so for me, I had all of it. Um, and I mean, I was literally taking medication for every part of my body. It felt was like. it, is it hard to diagnose or why did you said, cause you went a while, you, you were, you went a while yeah. before you were properly diagnosed. I'm curious, I, I assume a, yeah. a lot of other people share that, a similar yeah. journey. And especially women. And I think part of that is, you know, where a lot of the Crohn's symptoms reside is in the reproductive organ space. And so a lot of times there is a mm. misdiagnosis. When I originally um, had appendicitis, I was misdiagnosed for a burst cyst in my ovaries. Um, and so that happens to a lot of women and a lot of women with Crohn's who I've talked to have gone through a similar journey. So mine took seven years to get diagnosed. Um, there's just not a clear test. I mean, it's not pretty, it's several colonoscopies. and. It's basically they look for repeat or continuous chronic inflammation. Um, you know, and Crohn's to me is, I, as I've learned more about nutrition and the body, I think Crohn's is just one symptom of chronic illness, chronic stress, a diet that's highly processed, 
Um, it can show up in a lot of different places. For me, it showed up as Crohn's, but there's other people that develop rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and there's other, you know, different types of- Well, let me ask you about that because that, that's interesting play. to me. So is your work specific to helping people with Crohn's or is it any chronic illness? I mean, it's hard to group all chronic illnesses under the yeah. same umbrella, is it not? Or, or do all chronic illnesses respond favorably to your program? So not necessarily all chronic illnesses, mm -hmm. but I would say most. So I don't specifically work with Crohn's. When I first started, I was specifically trying to help people with Crohn's, but as I've learned more, it's, um, you know, sometimes people have IBS, which isn't necessarily um, full-on Crohn's disease, but it's, it's something that's related. And a lot of chronic illnesses all stem from the same root of chronic stress, chronic inflammation, poor diet. Um, and I didn't even realize I had a poor diet. I would have thought I had a healthy diet leading up to this. And then when I actually started assessing, you realize, okay, I eat a lot of processed foods, a lot of meat, a lot of dairy. I wasn't eating enough of the right foods. Um, to lower that inflammation and sort of dial it down a little bit. So that's why I do work with most chronic illnesses. Yeah, no, that, uh, that's interesting to me. I mean, can, can changing your lifestyle now be preventative for the future? And how do you get that across to someone who doesn't necessarily currently have a problem or thinks that their lifestyle is okay? For example, mm -hmm. in other words, I mean, not to not to scare people, but is it possible that I may have some genetic predisposition to a <laughs> chronic illness that I'm not even aware of? And maybe I'm like a month away or a year away <laughs> from it, you know, revealing itself. I mean, I'm sure most people only seek help after there's a problem and not before. I'm curious of your thoughts on this. I think that's a great topic to talk about because even our current healthcare system, we have a sick care system. You get sick, you go see, you know, you go to your doctor and then you treat it and we don't focus on preventive care. And so that is what I am all about too. You don't even have to have a chronic illness to start getting healthy. And actually the best time to work on getting healthy is before something develops. Once something develops, you've got to unravel a lot more work in there. You know, and if I had met with you know, a health coach when I was 25, um, I may have prevented Crohn's. And so mm, that's I interesting. Think that's, you, you really think, I mean, it would have been could, 100%. theoretically could have been preventable. hundred percent. I, I hundred percent agree. You know, only about 20% of diseases or less than 20% are actually from genetics. The rest is really diet and lifestyle, which is kind of alarming because I think we all are raised to think that oh, it runs in my family, but what really runs in our family, right, is our diet and our lifestyle. So the foods that our parents ate, um, sure. that's what we eat, right? And there are, cultural, the there are cultural elements to that, you know, whether yeah. Italian or, you know, whatever, I totally. mean, cultures, you know, uh, French, I mean, you name it, right? Uh, um, Especially when you see it on, you know, both parents have cooking it. Cooking is so... Uh, you know, uh, pertinent and relevant to that. But I okay. go back to, but I go back to my question, then how do you, I mean, you don't know what you don't know, right? And especially yeah. for a lot of type A people yeah. uh, who are driven, like you're, you're just kind of going through the grind and you mm -hmm. think that maybe you're living a healthy lifestyle, but you don't really know what could be better. So how do you get that across to someone um, who yeah. doesn't really think that they have a problem? You know, when I think it starts, you kind of, if, if you're already living the perfect diet lifestyle, then you, you probably don't need to work with a coach or start working it. But if you're kind of in the grind day to day, it starts showing up in different places. So maybe you're tired, you're, you know, fatigued more, you just don't have as much energy, or you get a little bit of bloating, or, you know, you're starting to have digestive problems that you never used to have before. Foods you eat now are now bothering you. You're developing food intolerances or food sensitivities. Um, your sleep is affected, your mood is affected. There's a major link uh, between the gut and the brain. So if you are eating an unhealthy diet, you may start having um, anxiety disorder that you didn't have previously. So it kind of starts to creep up. Maybe you have a joint pain that you didn't used to have before. I know um, it's so interesting. My arthritis started, I actually thought I had torn my rotator cuff. I, I couldn't remember what had happened or why I would have torn it. I was like, this is so weird. I've never had pain in my shoulder. 
I was supposed to go see an orthopedic surgeon. And then all of a sudden the pain went away in my right shoulder. The next day it was in my left shoulder. So I was like, okay, wait a minute. And I see shoulder pain and shoulder, people think they have shoulder injuries all the time. And that's one of the very first symptoms that there's inflammation. And that's where it's starting to build up is in your neck and your shoulders. So I think it's really, I mean, it's the warning signs the, the, are there. Yeah, the warning <laughs> signs are there, exactly. But like, it's, you may easily dismiss them for totally. something else. Um, I mean, should or can people test for genetic predispositions to chronic illness? Is that something that is even possible? I don't know a whole lot about that. Yeah. I think it is possible. And what's so interesting is you may have a genetic. I'm sure, it's not cheap or covered, or I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, no, preventative totally not. care is not you our know, strong suit in the um, in America. No, and I think it's you may have the predisposition, but you have the ability to turn it on or off. And so even if you are predisposed for a disease like Crohn's it doesn't mean you're going to get it. So even if you right. knew it was out there, you know, I don't think it's better to not know it's out there because if you know it's out there, you might always be living with that stress or anxiety of like one day it's going to show up and it's going to turn on. The truth is for most of us, it could turn up and it could show up. Um, you know, and for me, I like to say that I've healed from Crohn's tomorrow. It could come back. You know, I really try to live a healthy lifestyle now to prevent it from coming back. I hate using the word remission because for me, I, I like to think that once it's gone, it's, it's gone. And if it comes again, it comes again. But um, I think there's things you can do to keep it from coming back. So I don't know that there's benefit to seeing kind of like going to a fortune teller. Do you really want to know the future? Right, right, know. right. Well, <laughs> Only yeah, if it's I mean, good. <laughs> you know, 23 and me, right? It's like all those, uh, those genetic questions. Uh, I don't want to know. <laughs> I get it. I mean, listen, you know, you also can't live your life in fear, in constant yeah. fear. And you can't, I mean, you have to just live your life. But I think to your point, setting yourself up, creating a strong foundation where yeah. you, where you're, you're living a healthy lifestyle that incorporates with your work uh, and mm -hmm. culture and family and all those other things that is sustainable, um, right? Where you're not just kind of down a slippery slope where things are just yeah. gonna, like a, a, a train wreck in slow motion, if you will. Let's change gears totally. for one second. I I'm sure there are people listening now who are also thinking about changing careers. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they fear taking that plunge or they might be feeling stuck in kind of a comfy corporate lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We all have financial concerns, no matter what our situation is. What advice would you give to others who might be considering making a career change? And what are some lessons you've learned so far in your journey? Yeah, I think the first thing is really get clear on what it is you want to change. And it's interesting, people will come to me wanting a major career change. And when we actually break it down, and when you work with me, it's we don't just talk career or diet, we do everything. And what sometimes will come down to is there's actually a lack of fulfillment in their personal life, unfulfilling relationships or, or something there. And so sometimes that lack of fulfillment outside of work may be making your actual work feel less fulfilling than it is. And so I don't even always recommend a career change to everybody. I really try to take an assessment of what's going on in the whole picture, and that's why I'm much more holistic. And if it truly is, all these other things are lining up and the career is, is really the thing, it's just not the right fit, then we're gonna do a deep dive into that. And it's, you know, career change, I think right now, a lot of people are changing gears, working for themselves, and I think it's amazing. But I think start with, it can take time to figure out what it is you wanna do. You may have to go back to school. I had to take a one year um, nutrition program, so I couldn't just leave my job to go straight into it. I had to kind of do it on the side. I think if there's something you're really interested in pursuing, start pursuing it while you are still in your current job, fit it in, whether it's nights and weekends, um, you know, or if it's something you need to talk to your boss about taking a day every month to pursue this passion project of yours and feel it out um, before kind of making that, that big shift. I think a lot of people are scared mid-career, especially, you know, I've been in a career for 15 years. It's definitely scary to start over. I think what's important too is, and one of the other um, kind of assignments that I do is I make everybody go through and write down, you know, 
what are their skills? And a lot of the skills aren't specific to their job or even their industry. So if you're a great manager, a great leader, great project lead, um, great strategy development, that's going to transfer to almost any industry. And so keep that top of mind, worry less about the, the details and the nuances of your day-to-day -day job and think more about the high level um, competencies that are going to transfer with you uh, because you can do a lot of different things. And so I think that's kind of how I would recommend getting started. I would say first, like I said, check everything else, make sure it's really the career that needs a reset. If it is, then try to fit it in in the part-time and think about your transferable skills. Yeah, so don't quit your job tomorrow uh, just because you have an idea on something. Um, no. <laughs> uh, and, and, also, and also don't get so focused on title. I think it's about identifying yeah. skills not yeah. your title. And I think people get so caught up because they think, okay, well, I've worked really hard to earn this title and Absolutely. I can't give up that title. And titles mean different things based on which industry you're in, which company you're at. They, they're they not one for one. Um, so definitely don't get caught up there, you know? And I think, um, you know, the other piece of that I just lost my train of thought, but I was going to say, okay. um, you know, as just you are, right, thinking, of, um, yeah, don't worry as much about the title, what you're going to do. And look, if you are able to leave, you want to just make sure, um, what are the things that are missing from your current job? And are those things you can find in your next job? So it's not just about your skill sets that are transferring. It's like, what do you wish was there? What do you wish you were involved in? And find a career where that's, Part of it because leaving one unfulfilled job just to go to another unfulfilled job, you're going to actually be probably, you know, more depressed. Um, you're going to have to starting any new job. It takes you at least six months to get up to speed. So you want to just make sure when you are leaving that you're leaving for the right reason. Grass isn't always greener if you're staying in the industry and just changing companies. Sure. So you've got to make sure if you're changing industries, what is it that you're going to gain from this? And I think also what's really important too is think about how is that going to fulfill your life outside of work? Because work is not everything. Um, you know, we're not here on this planet just to work every, you know, hour and every minute of our day. I don't know. Ask some New Yorkers. They might, they might, uh, they <laughs> might answer differently. You know, right. Like, are you going to have more time to see friends or family? You know, are you going to be able to change environments? Is there a different city you want to live in? I think those are all really important things to think about when you are making this type of change. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, that's so relevant. I talked to so many millennials uh, and, and, and in interviews and research who say, mm -hmm. who, I mean, it actually contributes to more getting promoted creates more stress because they're getting deeper totally. down a hole that they don't necessarily want to go in or be in, but then they like feel like they can't give it up. And every time they get promoted, it just creates more stress, which is crazy to me. But uh, again, I mean, that, that may be a sign and which, which doesn't help chronic illness either. I mean, stress is no. a contributing factor as well. Right. So it's all connected. I'm going to ask you a, totally. a, a tough question here. And there are, Ooh. there are many coaches in the world. Okay. What gave you the confidence to say to yourself, hey, I can enter this really competitive landscape and differentiate myself. And, and how does one do that? Oof, this is a tough question. But, um, you know, I just look back at where I was before and where I am now. And it's, I don't even recognize the person that I was before I started this journey. And it wasn't that long ago. And so I think I was my first client, essentially. So I figured out how to cure myself from an otherwise incurable disease. Um, I went from being able to, you know, struggle to walk. I mean, I was wheelchair bound, um, which is crazy to think. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that. I mean, I was really struggling with that. And now, I mean, I don't ever see that in my future. And so I think what really makes me unique or makes any coach unique is our experience. We've lived it. So I'm not here trying to coach somebody on a subject that I don't know anything about. I'm here coaching people on something that I've gone through. It's very personal for me. I'm very passionate about it. And I, like I said, I'm my first success story. And so that's really kind of what gave me the push to, I can do this.
Yeah, I mean, life experience is, is everything. It's one thing to, to talk about something that you've heard others go through, but when you've really lived it through it yourself and found success, right? right. I, think, I, think, I think having found, found success in something that works, and then you're like, well, well, I want to tell the whole world about this. And, and there's lots of other people that can benefit from, from all of my trial and error. It's not just like I woke up right. one day, it's, I did, there's a lot of trial and error and you're saving people right. that years of struggle and time, um, uh, you know, in, in finding, so that they can just find solutions that are proven and, and can work. Tell me about right. the community aspect to your work. I mean, I know that one-on-one -on -one coaching is necessary. How can you yeah. leverage a community to help people? In other words, we all need accountability partners in order to totally. make sustainable change. Um, you know, it's hard to commit to something by yourself. I you know I totally agree. And I know we talked about this, you know, before that the community aspect to health and wellness is so important. And it's something a lot of us lost during COVID where suddenly, you know, you, you know, I used to go to a gym and do gym classes and just felt like there was always someone doing it with me. And, you know, if you sign up for a class, you're not missing it, right? So you have a little bit of built-in accountability. When you're eating at home, working out at home, everything's by yourself. It's really easy to just fall off. And so the community aspect is so important. And, you know, one of the interesting things is, you know, you kind of become who you spend time with. So if you're spending time with people that have unhealthy behaviors, maybe, um, you know, party scene or a scene that you're just not as interested in anymore. That's who you are. That's who you're becoming. If you want to get healthier, hang out with the people that are making the healthier lifestyle choices or the people who are committed to doing it. So I think that's part of it. And I've even noticed, they call it kind of the ripple effect, that the people that have been spending time with me have started to adopt some of the things, you know, my parents are almost vegan, which is just mind blowing. Um, and so it's just kind of, once you start doing it, it kind of spreads. And I think back to the community and the accountability side, I have noticed that. So right now um, we're halfway through actually a 28 day wellness challenge that I'm doing. Um, and we have a Facebook group and it's just so nice every day. People are going into the group posting, you know, what's going well for them, where they're struggling. Does anybody have any tips they can share? Also, you've got someone that's kind of checking in like, hey, are you doing it every day? How is it going? Where you, I think we are very quick to disappoint ourselves, but we hate disappointing others. And so when you have some accountability, you are much more likely to do it. And so that's actually something this year that I want to put more emphasis on, where in the past, I've definitely been much more one-on-one -on -one client focused. And this year, I'm really focused on building up a community because I think that's how we change. Not everyone is at a place where they're ready for a one-on-one -on -one coach, but a lot of people are ready to start instilling some healthier habits and want that group support. So I think it's really, really important. Yeah. And, and people just don't want to feel like they're alone, you know, and that they're being totally. alone in this journey. And I think that is just, that uh, is so important for people. What is something you wish you had known five or 10 years ago that would have made your life so much easier had you known? Ooh, that's a tough one. You know, I think, I don't think I would have done anything different. I think I had to go through the journey. I think I had to go through getting sick to get well. Um, because I, I think if it had never gotten as bad as it had gotten, I probably would have just lived with the low level chronic inflammation and, you know, been on a downward spiral. So I'm, I'm actually really grateful for my journey. I think what I wish I had known, and this is, you know, not always so popular of an opinion, um, just the effect of diet on our whole body health and mental health. I wish I had known that because back, you know, turn the clock back 10 years ago, if I had known how much of an impact diet would have made, I probably would have started making some dietary changes in my life. And I don't know that I would have gone completely vegan yet, but I would have definitely made some healthier choices and it may have prevented my Crohn's from one even happening or getting to a point where it got. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of us aren't, you know, we're not trained in diet. We, you know, we just know what we grew up with, what our friends eat, what's around us, but it has such an effect on your whole body and, you know, every system, your hormones, 
So I just think that's probably the one thing I wish I had just known a little bit more about, and it probably would have, you know, changed the progression or, you know, trajectory for the next 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Uh, like I said, you don't know what you don't know. And there are so many other factors between friends and culture and that, that affects, uh, everything you do in terms of food and your, your daily lifestyle. Um, how can we learn more about you and, and get involved? Yeah. So I am on Instagram at the chronically well, that's where I now post most of my content. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, just Kelsey Trusesti. You can find me there. Um, and, you know, the big things I have coming up, so I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching support. I also do corporate presentations on different wellness topics. And so if you're interested, reach out. Yeah, I, I love, I mean, you, you post great content. I love, uh, I love all the content that you post. It's really in, uh, informative and educational. Uh, I think it's really, really great. My wise millennial friends, regardless of whether you're type A or type B or type Z, you know, we all have some unhealthy habits that could be improved with support, whether it's individual or group based. Kelsey is 100% passionate about helping you and you cannot find a more genuine human being to work with. So regardless of where you are in your health journey, I think it's worth reaching out to her and having a conversation that 15 minutes might literally change your life <laughs> and we all deserve the best quality of life possible. So Kelsey, thank you so much for coming on and thank sharing you. your views. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. And thank you to the Wise Millennial audience. Of course. Cool. I think we're all, all set. How um, I can stop the recording here. Uh...